good, right? <laughs> through the ranks and is currently serving this community as a captain. He has responsibility over quite a few different key areas since becoming the captain. Particularly right now, his focus and his attention has been in community services and in the professional standards division. It's a great honor to have Captain Whitney be here this evening with us to talk about some of the things that are currently being done under his supervision, under his watch. And I would ask that you take a moment to welcome Captain Whitney to us. Good evening. This is a wonderful event. Um, I'm just going to speak about a few things that we have going on at the police department and then uh, talk about our gun buyback as well. So just to give you a little idea what I do, probably the easiest way to tell you what I'm responsible for is I'm not responsible for the patrol division. Everything else I'm responsible for. So I stay pretty busy and uh, community service section right across the street, they work for me and, and we're out in the community quite a bit, along with Sergeant Brent Garrick, who's our community Woo! engagement officer. So some of the things we've wrapped up this year already is Midnight Basketball has concluded. That was a very wonderful event. Uh, we're out there every evening and uh, we had a very good time playing basketball with the kids, and they schooled us quite a bit. I'm not ashamed to admit. Um, I can't. I can't. I can't play basketball. They they should. I'm holding out for soccer, though. I think that's coming. So, um, so some of the things we have coming up is uh, next Sunday we are going to be at the Admirals baseball game. We're going. They're going to host a public uh, safety appreciation day. So those of you who may have uh, come to our open house in years past, we're going to take that open house on the road. We're going to move it across the street, and we're going to have a, uh, an event out there before the uh, Admirals game, which is at 105. So please come out and join us. Tell your friends and family. And we'll have booths and cars for the kids to, to play in and some of our vehicles out there that they can see and uh, get to talk to officers and work. I'm basically bringing a whole slew of officers from... <coughs> Uh, the cadets all the way up to myself will be out there, and I believe Chief Padu might be throwing out the opening pitch. Uh, so we'll see about that, but I, I need to talk to him this weekend. So uh, a big event that we have coming up is on August 26th, we are hosting the gun buyback program along with many other groups, foundations, and uh, other public uh, uh, The sheriff's office is going to be out there. 
the district attorney's office is going to be out there with us. And from 9 to 3, we are going to collect guns. And we are going to uh, offer gift cards in exchange for those guns. And it's no questions asked. You come up, you tell us you have a gun in the truck of your car, we will remove it. We will give you a receipt for it. And we will give you a gift card to go along with that. We don't even need your name. Just hand us the gun and we'll take it. And why are we doing that? Because a big part of uh, the gun buyback is there's guns in citizens' homes. Some, some of these guns, citizens do not know what to do with them. They hide them under their bed. They hide them in the dresser door. We do, we want, if you do not want that gun, we want to give you a venue to come turn it in. We'll take it any time of the year at the police department, but we want to have an incentive for you to come and turn it in and we'll take it from you. Probably the worst thing I do as part of my job is I review a lot of the burglaries uh, Monday morning when I come in from the weekend. And what I hate reading is that somebody had a gun stolen from their house during a burglary and they don't even know the make, model or serial number because they've not even touched it. They have no clue what they had and it may have been passed on from a grandfather or father and it's sitting in their house and they just didn't know what to do with it. So this is, gives you a great opportunity when you leave this event tonight to go and talk to family, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends and tell them about this program. On August 26th, you go to the fairgrounds from 9 to 3. I'll be out there, Sergeant Garrett will be out there. Or we, will, we will collect the guns from you and they're going to be melted down and we have a local artist who's going to uh, be working to create some type of uh, art sculpture uh, with the melted down guns. So that's uh, some of the things we have coming up. And uh, basically I encourage everyone in here, you're already involved today. Who's involved with their neighborhood watch? Who's going to a neighborhood watch me? Who knows every neighbor around the house? So a few more hands go up. So think about neighborhood watch, maybe attending one of your meetings. The other thing is, get to know your neighbors. I live in a port, I know every single one of my neighbors, they know me, we all have each other's phone numbers, and we basically tell everyone, especially these months, who's going on vacation, and when are you gonna be back? So we watch each other's homes. So we get to know your neighbors. Right. And, and really get to, uh, I think I'm hearing something from on the other side. So, so get to know your neighbors, go to see who need watch meetings. Find out what's going on in your neighborhood. Be involved in next door. So I really encourage you to do that. I'm going to be around for the, the remainder of the evening. If you have anything that you just desperately have to ask the police department about, I am. I, I go to quite a few community events. I have an open book. Ask me anything you want. I'm here to tell you the truth. Unless I can't talk about it, I will tell you that. But whatever you want to know about what's going on in the police department, I'll talk about it. So thank you for your time and thank you for being here tonight. about the gun buyback. Gun buyback. It is on our Facebook. Uh, Sergeant Garrick will be uh, blasting us out on next door this week. We have a planning meeting this week, so we're going to kind of work out a few more little logistics. We will get that out hopefully by Wednesday night. Our meeting's Wednesday afternoon, and we're, we're going to roll right into it. And we'll have a little bit more information out. But it is on our Facebook. Please share it. If you're not, uh, if you didn't like our Facebook or you're not part of our Facebook, Sergeant Garrick, his feelings will be genuinely hurt because he, he like lives this. He's on vacation and he's posting things. Luckily, he didn't post a picture of himself on the beach in Hawaii because I don't know if anybody wants to see that. But but he was still doing his Facebook on vacation. So that's a lot of dedication. We're grateful for that. So please like his Facebook page, like <laughs> love his Facebook page, and share that uh, that post with your family and friends. We're sharing it with next door. Blast it out there. And, and I'll be quite honest. It's we just don't want the guns in Boyo. We're putting this out to the county. If somebody shows up from Sacramento County and has a gun they want to turn in, we don't care where you're from. We're not asking to look at your ID. We don't want to know your name. Just give us the gun, so we and we'll give you a, a, a gift card for it, and we'll get it melted down and get it out of the criminal's hands. Thank you so much, Captain. Benny.
All right, our next guest speaker is here on behalf of the Solano County District Attorney's Office. It is my pleasure to introduce Krishna Abrams, who has a career of dedication to public service and here with a powerful message for us. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, um, thank you to Isabel for inviting me here tonight and to speak. I I'm honored to be here. It's obviously a somber event. I feel like, you know, I've been a prosecutor for over 20 years and I meet some amazing people throughout my career, but unfortunately the circumstances in which I end up meeting people are often tragic and they're unimaginable. Um, people like Patty and Isabel, I, I feel like I've met you and I know because of their cases going through our office and through the system, but I'm honored to be able to call both of you my friend. And so it's it's tough because we see it every day, we see it every day. We have 65 pending homicide cases in the courts right now in Solano County. Um, we see it off uh, way too often. We have young lives being lost, we have young lives being taken, and so often, and I've tried a lot of them, we have one young man killing another young man. We have our youth killing our youth in our community. And when that happens, we see these lives devastated and destroyed because it's not just those two individuals, as we see tonight, everyone here that cares. We have the shooter who devastates their family because now they're not gonna see their loved one anymore because he's going away forever and their loved one and their friends. And then you have the person whose life was taken by unnecessary acts of violence. And you have, and we see what happens. We have, you know, Patty here and we have Isabel here to see what happens. And these, these consequences are everlasting. They are forever. And it's in an instant where that person who chooses to take a life they can't, those choices that they make, they can't take them back. They can't turn back time. And in an instant, it does devastate families forever. And so we see it early on, and we see it as it goes through the court system, and we see the frustration. You know, I think one of your cases is not even to prelim. The other one is just going to trial. These cases take forever to get through the system. But we see the grief, the sadness, the, uh, the anger, and the extreme frustration in trying to get justice for losing their loved one. And so I want Isabel to come up here real quick because I think that what is so important, we see these families that are devastated, we see them day after day coming to court, and life seems extremely unfair when these people's lives are taken for no reason. And like her young son, Eric Reyes, I mean, he had so much going for him and all of his hopes and, hopes and dreams are shattered. And so I think, like, I really want to commend you and Patty, but to take that, channel that grief and that sadness and that anger and turn it into something positive as to what you're doing with your foundation and with your foundation, I think it truly will make a difference in our community. If we can reach out to the youth, I truly believe, I always, I speak at these schools all the time to the kids and I'm like, if we can mentor them, if we can reach out to them, if we can be a part of like your sports program when you did midnight basketball or whether it's education, arts and music, if we can engage the youth and we can prevent them from making choices of getting into the criminal justice system, we succeed. And that way we, and what you're doing with your foundation, is you're trying to make sure that another youth doesn't go to prison for the rest of their life by doing something so stupid, and you also are gonna prevent another family from having to live through the experience that you're living through. So I think when we channel that grief and that anger, and we do it in this positive way, I really think we give back to this community, and we actually, and you actually, will save lives. So thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, our next guest speaker is Linda Kingston. Linda, where are you? Linda is the principal of Bethel High School, and in sitting and talking with Linda, I got an opportunity to learn some details about Eric that were really quite touching, and I think that Linda, as a educator for more than 25 years and here locally in the city of Vallejo now with such a focus on making an impact in our youth is an amazing role and one in which we greatly appreciate the dedication and the focus. 
So thank you for being here and thank you for speaking to us this evening. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. The hardest thing as an educator, and especially as a high school principal, is to get a phone call. I know it's hard on the families, but I know it's gonna break my school on Monday morning. I had so many text messages, phone calls from parents, community members, students that February, Saturday. Our prayers, our thoughts, our hearts were with the family. And we knew we needed to make sure our school family was as supported as it needed to be. Because we are a community. We live in Vallejo, our kids are Vallejo. I have the best children at Jesse Bethel High School. I have the best parents, the best support systems. And to have that phone call after, as I was sharing, the memory that just etches in the brain is Eric just probably seven school days before getting his first superintendent honor roll certificate from the superintendent of Vallejo City Unified Schools. She made sure she was there to hand them out. That's 4.0 or higher. Eric in his senior year, first semester, achieved 4.0 and higher, straight A's. Looking at him, the twinkle, you don't see the twinkle? You don't see him laughing? But that day, as he walked across the stage, shook Dr. Bishop's hand and shook mine and he smiled and he twinkled and he said, bet you never thought you'd see me up here. <laughs> I said, took me long enough. <laughs> and he laughed. And then I get the phone call. <clears throat> I too cannot give enough appreciation to Isabel and the family. Two causes, daylight shooting two blocks, one block from home, in the middle of the day, the guns need to go. One more youth gets shot, one more youth from my school gets shot, I might have to go in the neighborhood too. My children have promise, 4.0s. You see admissions incredible mentorships from all of you. We're a community and we need hope. We need celebration and we need to be positive. And we need to believe. I'm in the business of belief. All my children will succeed. All my children will be superstars. And with your support, with the community's support, you are always welcome at my school. Come and help. Come and support my youth and your youth to making us the best. Because we are. Eric is not with us, but he is here every day and every memory on that school site. And in the heart of all of us educators to know we need to do better. So there's three things. Love of family, the power of education, and the belief that today we make a better world. I need you to go home, hug your family members, tell them you love them every day. That gets them to school positive, that gets them to work positive. Power of education. My teachers and I, we can do half. We're only half. And I see a lot of faces here that are on my campus every day, so I need to say thank you and I do appreciate it, and you really, truly are welcome, and we need you, our children need you. So go volunteer, I challenge you to go spend some time with us. Go find those kindergartners, come up and join us high school kids, we're a lot of fun. <laughs> we are, it's my 26th year in high school, not counting the four I did myself. <laughs> and yeah, believe. I need us all to believe that our future is better, because our children's future is better. Because we're in it, and they're in it. And so I need to say thank you tonight, and we need to do this every year, 
and keep our hearts open and keep Eric with us because he is our future and the power of what we can be. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. We have two more guest speakers. The next one is a fantastic um, member of, or actually, let me put my glasses on because otherwise I'm gonna be <laughs> paraphrasing in a way that's not appropriate. Mina Diaz is the founder and director of Centro Latino. Where are you, Mina? <laughs> She is a proud mother of three children, a grandmother of one, and in preparing for this introduction, I got a chance to also speak with Nina. I was very much touched by her passion. Not only does she have the Centro Latino, but she's also the co-founder of CEL, which is another program here in Vallejo, also serving our youth. So without further ado, I ask that you put your hands together and welcome Mina Diaz. Good evening, everybody. Um, before I talk to you a little bit about what um, Isabel um, asked me to, to bring forward, I want to also echo behind Krishna and say how much I admire Isabel. I can't tell you um, how much how highly I think of you. Not all of us are able to turn something as heartbreaking and painful as what Isabel went through and Patty went through and turn it into something positive. And you know, one might think, well, what could positive be about something like this? Well, there's a lot of positive things. They're out there to change lives of others. You know, if they can avoid one mother having to not cry the way they shed their tears, if they can have a child be able to graduate with a 4.0 or you know, not a 4.0, you know, they're out there doing what they need to do and they're changing lives. So my respect to both of you and my admiration because I don't know if I'd be able to do that. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Gracias, Isabel. Gracias. There's three things that I'm going to be talking to you about and I'm going to step a little out of the norm. I'm going to be talking to you about gangs and I'm going to be talking to you about um, the school district, and I'm going to be talking to you about community. Um, why, you probably are asking, why, why are these three things important? They're kind of random, they, do they even go together? They do, because a lot of the kids that are, that are getting into trouble and that are you know, shooting each other, um, a lot of them are gang members. And what we need to understand is that most of gang members join gangs between the ages of 12 and 15, sometimes even younger. I was speaking to Sergeant, to Captain Whitney, and we're agreeing that sometimes even younger. Um, a lot of them are girls. A lot of them come from impoverished homes, broken homes. So that in itself is a reason why they, they join gangs. And I don't justify them, but I want you to understand, because I've been studying gangs for a long time, um, there's things that happen in a person's life. There's things that happen in a person's life that take you into a, a, a life of crime. You know, a lot of these kids, and I'll speak for Latinos right now. There's gangs of all different kinds of kids, but I'll speak for Latinos because being the director at the Centro Latino, I see a lot of the parents of gang members, and I see a lot of the gang members because we work with them and we try to help them out. Um, a lot of them arrive in the United States without speaking English. So they bond with their own as a form of survival. A lot of them, the parents don't speak English, and um, like my parents didn't, they didn't participate in school activities as much. That's really important. You, you have to be able to be there for the kids so that the kids feel like they're part of something. And they don't go outside looking for a family that they should be having at home. So that, that's one of the things that's important that we have to target and help and work with the, with the youth because if we don't, this is just going to be a cycle that's going to continue and continue. As far as the, the school district, we formed, and I say we because um, it was a collaboration of a lot of people, you know, this is not something I did on my own, but uh, Patty Crespo, Patricia Crespo, who's the vice principal at Jesse Bethel and myself, direct a program at both Vallejo High School and um, Bethel, 
and along with the, the, the principal who's been very, very supportive for us from Jesse Bethel. We have 68 kids, and these kids are kids that normally wouldn't participate in different activities. They'd be outside maybe doing other things, like getting into trouble. But we work with them in preparing them for college and universities. We're working with their parents and teaching the parents how to even, you know, basic stuff, like how to read a report card, what to do if you want to file a complaint, how to help your child. We have tutors that come in from Maritime Academy. We have about 16 tutors. We're lining up mentors and speakers that will look like these children that have been in the shoes of these children. Why is that important? Because they're likely to listen to someone who can look at them and say, look, I am you, and you are me, and I made it, and you're going to be okay, but if you stay on this path, if you stay in school, if you stay out of trouble, if, if they see that you believe in them, because that's part of the problem. A lot of these kids don't feel like they're they're even you know, worth anybody believing in them. So I ask all of you to, to join any of the two organizations, the Centro Latino, the, the Ser Latino, start your own, but participate in helping others. Community, it's important for all of us to work together because people can say, you know, this isn't my problem. I don't have a child that's in a gang. I live in the good part of Vallejo. Now, I don't live in the ghetto. I'm not out there. My kid doesn't have to walk through this. Okay, well, my kids don't go to schools here. Okay. That, that's perfectly fine. You've taken the steps that you needed to ensure that your children are safe. But believe me, random acts happen. Right, Isabel? Right, Patty? Random acts happen. And we owe it not just to your own children. Okay, my children are adults. I'm in this for the long run. I have a grandson that's two years old, and I would be ashamed of myself if someday when he grows up and something continues to happen the way things are now, or something happened to him or to a friend, how shameful for me to say, you know, I saw this happening and I didn't have the guts, the courage, the time, the energy, the ganas, we say in Spanish, we say ganas, ganas is desire when you want something bad enough to change the world for you, Abel, and for your grandkids, and for your kids, because they're all equally as important. So never think, you know, this is a, a Mexican thing, you know, these Mexican kids are out there killing themselves with these gangs, or, or the black kids are doing the same thing, or the Filipino kids, or the white kids. This is, it doesn't discriminate. Violence does not discriminate. Violence at home, Domestic violence, I, I worked for the county for 28 years. I saw people coming in for domestic violence that I would not ever have thought would be in that situation. Independent women that are out there that you wouldn't even think. So it touches every person's life. So please, as a community, I know all of us love our city, love our county. Let's work together because unless we start working with the youth, nothing's going to change. It's easier to, to work with a child that's 12 and 13 and guide him in the right direction than work with a 19 and 20 year old that's already in trouble. And unfortunately, we're losing our kids left and right, and that's not fair. It's not fair to their families, it's not fair to them. And, and like Krishna said as well, she kind of took my speech. <laughs> as she said as well, it hurts everybody. It hurts the people that lose their children, and it hurts the ones whose child have to be put away for life. And it hurts us knowing that it might be one of our kids, it might be one of the people that we know and love that it happens to next. So, I'm a toddler and I know that you know, I'm running over, over my time, but you know, please participate, please talk to others, let's work together, we're, we're all one. It doesn't matter what color we are, what language we speak. You know, we're all one person, we want what's best, and our kids deserve the best. This is a good city to live in. There's a lot of folks out there that care. There's a lot of teachers at the school district that care. There's a lot of principals, there's a lot of private organizations, there's nonprofits, you know, you've got your elected officials. Go talk to them, tell them what you need, tell them what you, what you desire, that they're all great people wanting to work with you. But nothing's gonna happen unless we start speaking up. And I, for one, have no problem speaking up, and I ask you all to join me to speak up. All right? Thank you very much. Well, 
I'm impressed. All of these wonderful, wonderful speakers. I just, before we announce our final keynote speaker, I want to take a moment to um, and invite you, if you haven't already done so, go take a look at the silent auction items. Amongst them are some pretty amazing things that we invite you to put your, um, you know, put your name on that list of potentially acquiring some of these things and inviting uh, you to maybe look at some golf, um, a wine tour, um, on the Napa Valley wine train. So there's quite a few different things. It's included in your program. So if you haven't already been over, it's in this located in this room to my right. So Mia talked a moment ago about having speakers that come that look like the Bethel High School students and other youth in the community. Our next speaker is Lily Elder. And Willie is actually well, you're, you're, you're not like a very good window, 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 by the way. High school. So this window. represents yeah. that, get it? that particular demographic <laughs> that we're talking about that can inspire our youth, that can promote to them an opportunity to hear what the potential is within. So we welcome Willie Felder to our stage, and thank you so much for being here with us today. for the Eric Graves Foundation. It's my, my pleasure. I, I couldn't, I'm, I'm a lost for words. Like, uh, I'm so thankful. And first of all, uh, I want to just uh, give my condolences to Isabel, Lisa, and Patty for putting this together and, and just having this beautiful event to keep Eric Graves spirit alive. So. All right, let me tell you a little bit about my, about myself. Um, I graduated from Jesse Bethel uh, in 2007, so I'm a Bethel alumni. So I, when I heard about Grizz, I, I had to come down to see. I was like, oh, Jags, Bethel Jag, that's my boy. So, so I'm going to tell you about myself. Um, I'm from this song is going to be sang by Anabel Prasad and the accompaniment by the guitarist by Anthony Simonetti. And if you bear with me, I've been asked to uh, make a little bit of an introduction regarding this song called Imagine. We ask everyone who has lost a loved one to, uh, to gun violence to say their name out loud if you're comfortable doing so. And also recognize all the mothers present who are here who have lost children. So if you're comfortable doing so during the course of the song, or if you want to just do so in silence, quietly, we would appreciate your participation. Thank you so much.
pleasure to be here united in such an important cause and to support the efforts of a woman who has been inspired through such a tragic loss and it's such an incredible story that inspires each and every one of us so thank you for everything that you're doing to turn things around.